Mayfield, can they do it again? Yes, they can! And the catch is made by Taj Washington, touchdown, USC! Blocked by Embiid! Timmy, yes! Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Beef Upfront podcast, the final mock draft from myself here on PickSwap Media before we head into Thursday night's first round of the NFL draft. Uh, we will be doing one group mock draft with a few other people from the channel, but this is my last personal mock draft. Um, recording this on Monday afternoon, straight after the Aaron Rodgers big trade to the Jets. So we had a little bit of a flip flop there in the first round. Uh, with, with the Packers and the Jets swapping picks 13 and 15. But other than that, we haven't had any other movement since the Panthers moved up to number one. Obviously, on draft night, that'll change. We'll, we'll get some movement. But this is my final mock draft for 2023. Um, I kind of made these picks off of what I think will happen, not based off of what I personally would do. Like with the Texans, I have them skipping on a quarterback because that's what the rumors are right now. I would take a quarterback there if I was them. Panthers, who I have selected at the first overall pick with the quarterback, I wouldn't take that quarterback. I would take a different one. So there's a bunch in here that, you know, necessarily uh, I wouldn't make these selections, but, you know, that's why I'm here and they're in the front office and everyone has their own different opinions. Uh, but these are what, what I think the picks are going to wind up at. Obviously, the order will get shaken up throughout the night uh, on draft night. But, you know, without further ado, we'll get into it here. The final beef up front mock draft on PicSwap Media. Uh, from Ryan Coyle himself. So number one overall pick, we got this penciled in pretty much now with the Carolina Panthers selecting quarterback Bryce Young out of Alabama. Uh, after watching his film, his his size concerns, they, they do kind of pop up at times and his lack of uh, overall arm strength, I think. But, you know, an elite level playmaker is able to ad lib out of the pocket, can beat you from the pocket as like a point guard out there. He can process things well. He takes good care of the football. Um, and I think he's got the, the right head on his shoulders to lead an NFL franchise. And I think as soon as this year, potentially put the Panthers in position to make the playoffs because the Saints, the Falcons and the Buccaneers are all, you know, not world beaters out there. So I think the Panthers have a good chance to potentially win that division, be like a, you know, a nine and eight or an eight and nine team if Bryce Young plays well. Uh, I don't necessarily think he's the best quarterback in this class, but I can see why some people do. And it looks like he's pretty much locked up to go number one there. So. Bryce Young of the Alabama Crimson tied to the Panthers at number one. Number two, we're going to have the Texans selecting edge rusher Will Anderson out of Alabama. There's a lot of buzz about Tyree Wilson from Texas Tech potentially going here. Um, and then also, like, you know, if I was if I was making the pick, I would have C.J. Stroud. He's my number one quarterback. I would have him at number one. But if he fell to the Texans at number two, with their quarterback situation currently, I think it's Davis Mills and Case Keenum in there. I mean, I definitely would be taking C.J. Stroud, but it doesn't sound like that. that's the case as of right now. Tamika Ryans with his defensive background is also an Alabama guy. I think it's going to make sense with the connection here to Will Anderson, the edge rusher from Bama. I think that's going to be the, the pick at number two. Um, super productive player in, in all his years in college, and now it's kind of like he's started not getting talked about enough, I feel. And coming into last year, he was the clear-cut, definite number one pick guy that's what everyone was saying about him um I, I think he's a very good player and i think he's one of those guys that just goes out there and produces he might not be the freakiest athlete but at number two i think the texans have to get a guy that they know is going to be a good player i think tyree wilson is a longer term project i think will anderson can come in and be a double digit sack guy from day one number three the cardinals i i've heard a lot that they want to trade back they want to get out of this pick they want to acquire more picks but for my trade for my mock drafts i never do trade so with the purpose of sitting and picking here, I will have them select an edge rusher Tyree Wilson out of Texas Tech. Has gotten some comparisons to like Hassan Reddick type. And with Jonathan Gadding coming over from Philadelphia as a defensive coordinator, now the head coach with the Cardinals, I think this pick would make a lot of sense there. The Cardinals just need to put some more talent on the defensive side of the ball and offense too. This is a, a rebuild, I think. They have their quarterback under contract, but Kyler probably won't be back. If they're out of it, I wouldn't be surprised to see them keep, keep him out the whole year. But this is a team I, th I expect to be finishing, you know, towards the bottom of the league again this year. This is a rebuild. Um, and I think they might be in a bit of a 
more, I guess, generous situation to maybe take a swing on a prospect like a Tyree Wilson. Um, but I do think that they're going to be they're going to be trading back in this one. But it, for sitting and picking purposes, I'll have them getting the edge rusher out of Texas Tech. Number four, the first maybe major shock of my mock draft. I have the Colts selecting quarterback Anthony Richardson out of Florida. Um, huge talent. I did two field breakdowns of him. If you want to go a little bit more in depth, one where he looked really good against Utah, but you also saw some of his flaws, and then one against Kentucky where he didn't really show up at all. And you can see why he's such a you know interesting prospect for this draft. I think the Colts are going to take a big swing on this one. There's been rumors that they don't really like C.J. Stroud either. So I think they take a big swing on him here. Um, their new head coach, Shane Steichen, just came from Philadelphia working with Jalen Hurts, another quarterback that needed work but also was really good in the run game. He's got two veterans in front of him, Gardner Minshew and Nick Foles. I think those guys' ability to at least play like maybe the first half of the year for this Colts team and then usher in Anthony Richardson, kind of like we saw with Justin Fields a little bit. Um, I think that would be a, a wise move there. But, you know, CJ Shroud's there. I'm taking him. But I do think that the Colts are, are going to take a swing for the fence and get maybe the most talented overall player in this draft in Anthony Richardson. Number five, the Seahawks selecting defensive tackle Jalen Carter out of Georgia. You know, the, maybe the number one overall prospect in this draft, according to, to most people on the field. But off the fields, there are some concerns. Seahawks have shown the ability to take some chances on some guys that have had some red flags before. I think they do it again here. Um, bank on the talent and, you know, picking in the top five. This isn't in a situation that the Seahawks are ever in. I think they're going to try and maximize that ability there and take the standout defensive tackle from Georgia. Number six, the Lions selecting cornerback Christian Gonzalez out of Oregon. I do prefer him over Witherspoon. I think he's a top corner in this draft. And I think his ability to, to run is going to what kind of sticks out. The Lions swung and missed kind of on Jeff Akuda a few years ago. They just shipped him off to at the Atlanta Falcons. So I think that there is a need at the cornerback spot. They have been investing up front a lot. It wouldn't surprise me, you know, if Jalen Carter was there, if they took him. Um, but I, I do think that they do need to address the back end a little bit more. One of the worst pass defenses, if not the worst pass defense in the league last year. It's going to be Christian Gonzalez there. Number seven, the Raiders. I have them selecting a guy that I'm kind of viewing as one of the overall safest players in this draft, and that's Peter Skronsky out of Northwestern. A plug-and-play guy that I think can play all over the offensive line. He's being viewed mostly as an offensive guard, so this might be a little too high for that, but the Raiders do need some work up front. Outside of Colton Miller, the offensive line isn't very good. Skronsky can play, like I said, all up and down the line, and, and Northwestern offensive linemen like Rashawn Slater have been kind of turning out pretty well recently. So he's seen a lot of good competition in the Big Ten, and I think keeping Jimmy Garoppolo upright and healthy – Gives the chances that gives the Raiders a chance to compete this year, potentially for a playoff spot. Number eight, the Falcons selecting cornerback Devin Witherspoon out of Illinois. As I just mentioned, I know they just traded for Akuda, but I believe he's a free agent after this year. And then they already have a stud in EJ Terrell. You can never have too many defensive backs in the league, um, in this league, in a passing league. Now you're gonna have to stop if you want to win the Super Bowl. I know. You want to match up with these guys till the Super Bowl, but you're going to have to stop a uh, Joe Burrow, a Patrick Mahomes in your own conference now, a Jalen Hurts, you know, a Dak Prescott even. Um, you have to be able to defend the pass, and the Falcons team has put a lot of resources into the defense this offseason, and I think they kind of continue here after investing in uh, some high draft picks on the offensive side of the ball in Kyle Pitts and Drake London in the past few, few years. I think this year they, they kind of pivot, go defense, and get a quarterback in Witherspoon that could form a really nice one-two punch with A.J. Terrell. And then if you can unlock a little bit more of Jeff Akuda, that can be a really nice trio out there. Number uh, nine, the Bears selecting offensive tackle Paris Johnson Jr. out of Ohio State. You know, after trading down from number one to number nine, it seemed like either the best defensive player on the board or offensive tackle would be the move there for the Bears. Address the defensive side of the ball a lot in free agency. I think they, they need to protect Justin Fields, keep him upright, and give him the best chance to succeed. The Bears allowed 58 sacks last year, so offensive tackle, definitely a priority. That's why I'm going to give them Paris Johnson here out of Ohio State. Number 10, I have the Philadelphia Eagles selecting offensive tackle uh, Darnell Wright out of Tennessee. This is another situation where, like with the Cardinals, I think the Eagles are going to look to move down the board, potentially acquire a few more picks. Even though they have two first-round picks in this draft, I think they only have – it's either five or six picks. So I think Howie Roseman is going to look to kind of shuffle around the board. But if they do stick and pick here, this is a team I think that with Philadelphia, they like to plan ahead, 
getting a guy like Darnell Wright as a potential future replacement for like Elaine Johnson. Listening to some of Lane Johnson's comments recently, I don't really see him sticking around much more. I could see this being both him and Jason Kelsey's last dance. So I think that the Eagles like to plan ahead. And when you can get a def- offensive tackle that could fill right in for him at right tackle next year, which Jordan Mylot on the left, and have your two long term tackles there for Jalen Hurts, I think that's kind of a no brainer. Um, Darnell Wright at number 10, maybe a bit of a, a surprise there, but I do think moving down potentially if one of these teams like likes one of these edge rushers or they want to move up for a receiver or if like I have CJ Stroud dropping a little bit one of these teams want to trade up for a quarterback I would I wouldn't be surprised to see the Eagles move down so I do have them picking Darnell Wright for for sticking and picking at this situation but like I said I, I do expect them to try and move down from this number 10 spot. Number 11 I have the Tennessee Titans going quarterback here CJ Stroud of Ohio State. I think if he falls here, that'd be a steal. As I was mentioning, CJ Stroud is my top quarterback in this draft. Ryan Tannehill has one more year on his contract, and I don't think it's one of those situations where like he's penciled in as the starter all year. I think if he goes out and he kind of struggles off the bat, we could see CJ Stroud right in the fold there. I think the Titans do need that long-term quarterback. Malik Willis didn't really look the parts of an NFL quarterback last year. And I think C.J. Stroud, a super accurate passer, great from the pocket. His comparison for me is like a little worse version little worse version of a Joe Barrow. So if you can get the hat all the way down here at 11, I think Titans fans would be very happy. Number 12 had the Texans selecting wide receiver, the first wide receiver in this draft, Jackson Smith and Jigba out of Ohio State. Had him going Will Anderson at two. So they leave the first round without a quarterback. I could potentially see them, you know, if a guy like Will Levis or Hendon Hooker, they like one of those guys fall, maybe trade him back into the end of the first round. But uh, I think with Stroud, Anthony Richardson, Bryce Young all off the board, that leaves you Hendon Hooker and Will Levis. I don't know if either of those guys is worthy of taking at 12. Haven't really gotten into Levis that much yet. I do plan on watching some more of him this week. But Hendon Hooker, after watching him today, I don't really think he's a first-round type player. Um, And I do think Jackson Smith and Jigba is going to be a great receiver in this league from day one. I think he's going to be like a 90 to 100 catch guy within his first one or two seasons. Now it's just in terms of, you know, getting him the ball, but it's a Houston team that just needs to continue to add talent. So give me uh, Njigba there to the Texans at 12. Number 13 now, the Packers after the Rodgers trade today move up from number 15, and I have them selecting edge rusher Nolan Smith out of Georgia here, a a spot that I think needs to be addressed on this team. The defensive line last year was really poor against the run, um, and, and I do think that the pass rush overall needs some improvement as well. You get a guy like Nolan Smith coming from Georgia, has had some good production against high-level competition, ran a 4 3 8 40-yard dash. I think that's a, a really smart first-round pick there. I don't expect him to make it out of the top 16. Number 14 got the Packers – or the – excuse me, the Patriots selecting – Wide receiver Jordan Addison out of USC. This is a pick I've had slated here, I think, since I started my mock draft, since the official order came out. I just think he's a Patriots guy. He's just a, you know, a savvy route runner, a hardworking kid, and he goes out there and produces a, at the top level of college football, both in the ACC and the Pac-12. I think he's a, a good fit for the Patriots and someone that Mac Jones can kind of rely on going forward to kind of enhance his development. Number 15, the Jets, after the Packers uh, trade with Rodgers, moving down here to 15. They just flipped those 13 and 15s as part of part of the deal. I have them selecting edge rusher Miles Murphy out of Clemson with Aaron Rodgers now and uh, you know improved offense. I think the Jets think, all right, we're in position to make a run at this thing. We're going to have some leads. We're going to have to get, get after the quarterback, and I think Miles Murphy – is one of the safer guys in this draft. He's not going to be like a superstar type player, I think, but he is a guy I think you'll be able to pencil in for like in between eight and 11 sacks every year and be a pretty darn good player. He's a guy I'm, I'm higher on than most, I think, and I think he's going to have a really nice NFL career. So if the Jets are able to get him there, continue to add to that young defense, I think that's a smart play. Number 16, the commander selecting the first tight end, uh, Dalton Kincaid out of Utah. Uh, Logan Thomas has been an all right player. He, was a project and he had a nice little year got a contract but then last year was really unable to stay healthy seems like they're confident with rolling the ball with sam howell for a year and i think if you're going to do that you know let's give him as much weapons as possible to succeed i think dalton kincaid excuse me is the best tight end in this draft was a really nice player at utah the past few seasons i think he is a day one impact guy Number 17 had the Steelers selecting cornerback Deontay Banks out of Maryland. This is another guy that's been rising up the draft board and 
I do think this is going to be an offensive tackle or a receiver or a corner. And just kind of the way the board's been shaken out, I think a cornerback here would be the best move for the Steelers playing the, um, in the AFC, as I talked about already, with all the loaded quarterbacks they have. If Lamar comes back to the division, you also have Joe Burrow in your division. You have uh, Deshaun Watson in your division. You got Patrick Mahomes and Justin Herbert in your conference. You're going to have to be able to stop the pass. And I think a guy like Deontay Banks fits that Steelers kind of mold as well uh, for what they need and kind of the identity that that program has. Number 18, the Lions selecting a tight end, the second tight end of the first round. I got him going Michael Meyer out of – uh, Notre Dame here, they just traded TJ Hawkinson during last season. Uh, a tight end is a spot of need, I think. And with, you know, some of the recent news about the gambling stuff that happened with the Lions where, you know, Jamison Williams is going to be suspended for a little bit. They cut a, a pretty solid, you know, veteran type receiver in Quintez Cephas recently. This is a team that is lacking passing options right now. And I think, especially at the tight end, I think Michael Meyer has a good chance to be a good player for for the Lions and stick around in the league for a pretty good time and be a productive guy. So I think he fits that kind of Detroit mold as well. He's a pretty physical player, and I think Dan Campbell would welcome that in, uh, being the former tight end himself. Number 19, a bit of a slide here for this guy, but I think he finds a good home here. That's Tampa Bay uh, bringing in offensive tackle Broderick Jones out of Georgia. To Donovan Smith departed in the offseason, I believe um, – and you also have rock solid guy over there in Tristan Wirfs already, but I think they do need to shore up the other side of the offensive line. Um, yeah, Donovan Smith is a free agent. They didn't even bring him back. So this is a, a spot of need, I think, for, for Tampa Bay. Uh, Broderick Jones, another guy coming from the SEC. We're going to bank on, on that big-time experience as well as his ability to, to move at that large size that he is and, and be a, a solid – one, two punch at, at tackle. You need two good tackles, I think, in the league these days. So me, Broderick Jones, here to the Bucks. Number 20, the Seahawks selecting wide receiver Zay Flowers out of Boston College. That gives them a really nice trio to work with, with uh, Zay Flowers, like the explosive slot guy. And then you got Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf on the outside. That'd be a, a really nice like mixture of guys to work with for Geno Smith and a team that is going to have playoff aspirations again next year. And Tyler Lockett starting to get a little bit older. I believe north of 30 now. So DK Metcalf's your, your long-term guy there. T T Tyler Lockett, maybe another year or two. You pair him, at least with Zay Flowers, with Metcalf for the next like four or five years. And those are going to be two pretty explosive playmakers. I think Zay Flowers it could be one of the steals of the first round. Number 21, a bit of a surprise pick here. I have the Los Angeles Chargers loading up on offense and going with running back B. John Robinson out of Texas. I have his eventual slide leading here. I've seen him as high as eight to the Falcons. Some people got him going to 10 to the Eagles. I don't see that happening. I don't see the Eagles investing that high in him. But I do think the Chargers kind of going all in on offense is, is the way to go for them. If you're going to want to compete with Patrick Mahomes and Joe Burrow at the highest possible level, you're going to have to outscore them. I don't think you're going to be able to consistently stop those guys. So let's load up on offense. Let's, get, let's give Justin Rob, or excuse me, Justin Herbert a running back like Robinson to take some of the pressure off his shoulders as well as help our passing game out of the backfield. And I think uh, B. John Robinson is that guy to do that. Austin Eckler has been rumored to be wanting like a restructure or a trade. So I think if, if Robinson falls here to the Chargers, we could see Austin Eckler after the draft on the move. It's not worth it to pay like a running back like that who's undersized and frequently banged up as well. So Chargers with a bit of a shocking pick here going with B. John Robinson. Number 22, excuse me, got the Ravens selecting edge rusher Lucas Van Ness out of Iowa. He kind of fits that like tough nose Ravens mentality. Could see him going corner here, but I think edge rusher is a, a need as well. And I feel like he he fits the, the program identity of the Baltimore Ravens. So I'm going to give them the edge rusher out of Iowa. Number 23, another guy who slid down the board a little bit. I have the Vikings selected quarterback uh, Will Levis out of Kentucky. I'm another guy that has a lot of the tools and apparently the good like football IQ makeup and whatnot, but certainly you need some improvement and refinement to his game. I think there's a perfect spot for him with Kirk Cousins, I believe only on a one-year deal, be a free agent after next year. So if Kirk Cousins doesn't elevate the Vikings to that next level, get him to at least like a conference title game, I think he could be on his way out and, and Will Levis could be the long-term quarterback there for O'Connell in Minnesota. So give me Levis, the quarterback out of Kentucky to the Minnesota Vikings. Number 24, the Jags selecting offensive guard Osiris Torrance out of Florida. It's another pick that I've had penciled in for a while. I think if he's there, he he's definitely should be the pick. 
keeping Trevor Lawrence upright and healthy should be their main priority. They've built around him in the passing game. Maybe add another receiver I could see here, but I do think enhancing that interior offensive line uh, should be a priority. So give me Torrance there to uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars and then staying in the state of Florida. Number 25, the Giants selecting wide receiver. Quinton Johnson out of TCU. I think that they into in order to make this Daniel Jones situation work after giving them that big contract, let's give them as much weapons as possible on the outside. The wide receiver core is certainly an area that needs improvement. They did add Darren Waller, another a nice good pa- pass catcher to that situation. But uh, I do think adding a guy like Quentin Johnson, the big body receiver out of TCU, would be a smart play. Number 26, the Cowboys selecting safety Brian Branch out of Alabama. I think they need to improve that back end, especially against this Philadelphia Eagles team that you know just brought back Jalen Hurts on a, a big contract extension. They already have Dallas Goddard, Devontae Smith, and A.J. Brown. And it has been rumored that they are looking at potentially adding Jackson Smith and Jigba as well as high as num- pick number 10. This is uh, an uh, Eagles team that is pretty loaded in the passing game, and, and the Cowboys need to refine that secondary a little bit and, and give them the best chance to stop the Eagles. So I like the safety out of Alabama there to the Cowboys. Number 27, have the Bills after Bijan Robinson going to the Chargers. I have them selecting another running back here, two running backs in the first round. It, it sounds like that is going to happen. It just depends on what teams. Uh, maybe if one of these guys continues to fall, we see some people trade up or trade back into the first round. But I have the Bills selecting running back Jameer Gibbs out of Alabama. I think he could be that missing piece of the offense. Uh, I've gone on rants and tangents about it before during the season, but I always say the Bills aren't going to get over the top, I think, unless they can – consistently establish a run and find a way to have a second identity that isn't Josh Allen playing hero ball with his arm and having to use his legs as well. And I think Jameer Gibbs is an explosive back. Alvin Kamara comparisons would be a perfect fit for the Bills. The Bengals at 28 selecting tight end Darnell Washington out of Georgia. As I've already talked about with a few other AC, uh, AFC teams, let's load up on the offensive side of the ball and just try to outscore teams. I think the Bengals need that kind of game-changing tight end, and he's also a very good blocker, help help keep Joe Burrow upright as well. Huge frame and a lot of unlocked potential for Darnell Washington out of Georgia there, so give me him to the Bengals. Number 29, the Saints selecting defensive tackle Brian Brisset out of Clemson, a guy that's had a, a bit of some injury concerns, but when he's been on the field, he's been really productive, the former number one overall recruit. I don't know how much uh, they take that in stock in, in football. I know in basketball that's a big thing where, like, all right, this guy is really talented for a reason. And it's not like he had a bad college career. He, he was a starter at Clemson. He had a nice run there. Um, has slid a little bit down the draft. But the Saints have, I think, in the past taken some chances on some guys. And I think they do it again here with Brian Brisset. Number 30, the Eagles with their second pick of the first round. I got him selecting cornerback Joey Porter Jr. out of Penn State. You know, Gonzalez and Witherspoon are kind of one and two in most people's eyes. And then for the third corner, it's a bit of a question. I really like Porter, and I think – Darius Slay and James Bradbury, Eagles bringing them back on, on contract extensions this offseason are a nice one-two punch, but those guys are both north of 30 now. Uh, and Darius Slay, I don't know. I know Bradbury's was more of an extension. Slay's was more of like a restructure. And you you need corners in this draft or in this league and be able to defend the pass. Joey Porter Jr., I think, is an He's going to be an awesome NFL player, and I think he's really physical as well. And, and he's going to help bring like another flavor to this Eagle back end of their defense. And, and I would love it if they were able to find him there. And so I'm going to have them select Joey Porter Jr. Uh, and then number 31, the Chiefs closing out the first round. I got him selecting wide receiver Josh Downs out of USC. This was a guy who was a really explosive player during his time um, in Chapel Hill down there playing in the ACC. Uh, I could also see him going like Jalen Hyatt here. I think they're going to opt to go for an explosive type playmaker to add to, the, to add to this offense, just make him even more scary. So that'll do it for the beef up front. Last official mock draft from myself. As I said, we're going to be running back another one over the next few days with uh, with just like a group consensus and kind of rotating picks. So that should be a fun exercise as well. But you know, thank you everyone for listening. If you haven't already, we have got a bunch of quarterback breakdowns on on the channel. We're going to have a few more coming out this week on Hendon Hooker and Will Levis as well. So make sure to pop those on to into those. Can't wait for the draft. We're almost here. All the, you know, the hard work, the study and the research, it's all going to eventually come to the forefront and we're going to see how these results come out. So as always, thank you everyone for listening. Please like subscribe and we'll talk soon.